Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering, with a focus, of course, on Commander. And today we have a new batch of spoilers from the Warhammer 40k Commander decks that are going to be coming out very soon. Seems like we've just finished with Dominaria United, and here we are again in spoiler season. So without further ado, I'm going to be going over the recently spoiled cards. And we're starting with the Swarm Lord, which is three colorless, one green, one blue, and one red. Legendary creature, Tyranid. It's a 5-5. It has rapid regeneration, which means it enters the battlefield with two plus one counters on it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. And it has Xenos Cunning. Whenever a creature you control with a counter on it dies, draw a card. Okay, this one was already spoiled a while back, so we're going to talk about it a little bit more quickly. People don't seem to like it very much. I think the second ability is pretty good because it lets you draw a card whenever any creature with a counter on it dies. That's a cool ability to build a deck around. And the fact that this is going to scale with the command attacks and draw a card whenever it dies itself after the first time means that it's going to be pretty solid. It's a little bit expensive, but I feel like a cool deck can be built around it, and it's not as bad as some of the other rares we're going to see in a moment. So the next card is Zarek the Silent King. For one colorless and three black, it's a legendary artifact creature. 3-4, it's a Necron. It has flying, and whenever it attacks, mill three cards. You may put an artifact creature card or vehicle card from among the cards mill this way into your hand. It's a pretty weak ability, to be fair. The fact that it needs to attack before you get anything, and even then you're just kind of getting a card back to your hand. So far from what we've seen spoiled, it's not great. It does work pretty well with another card that has just been spoiled. But that being said, this seems a little bit underwhelming for that cost. Next up we have Inquisitor Greyfax. It's also been spoiled before. It's one colorless, one white, blue, black. And it's a legendary creature, Human Inquisitor. It's a 3-3 with Vigilance. Unquestionable Wisdom. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and have Vigilance and Hunt for Heresy, which is one tap and tap target creature and opponent controls, Investigate. Again, a little bit underwhelming here, unless there's synergies that we don't know about yet. Giving all your creatures plus one, plus zero, and Vigilance is fine. That's pretty good. I mean, Vigilance is always nice. But plus one, plus zero, no toughness boost is a bit awkward. And then the other ability of just being able to tap somebody and investigate, that's, again, fine, but is that really strong enough on a Mythic Rare? Is that really what you want to be leading your deck? I'm not particularly interested in this one, but maybe someone else will be. Next up, we have Noise Marine for four colorless and one red. It's a creature, a status warrior, a 3-2, and it has Cascade and then Sonic Blaster. When Noise Master enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to the number of spells you've cast this turn to any target. So this obviously wants to go in a Cascade deck. It's pretty sweet if you do get to Cascade into it, but you're almost always guaranteed to get something cheaper than it. So basically, you're going to be sniping something for two when this comes in and getting another card. Is that good enough? Mm. Probably not in a lot of decks, but in dedicated Cascades decks, it could be pretty good because you might be able to cascade into multiple things. And cascading into this as part of a bigger chain can be super good because it's just going to deal so much damage when it comes in and be a real removal spell. This could be decent. Next up, we have Magus Lucia Kane for one colorless, one green, one blue, and one red. The legendary creature, Human Tyranid Wizard. It's a 1-1. One, one. So this is a Tyranid. I did not get that the first time that I saw it. I thought it was weird that it was blue, green, red because that seems to be the Tyranid colors. But again, I'm not really up to date with Warhammer 40k lore, so please let me know in the comments below if you know who this is. Human Tyranid is a bit of a weird creature type though. So it has Spiritual Leader at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Psychic Stimulus, which requires you to tap it and get two colorless. When you next cast a spell with X in its mana cost or activate an ability with X in its activation cost this turn, copy that spell or ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's a sweet ability. So this is a little bit less underwhelming than the other ones we've seen so far. I think it's nice to put a counter on something. That's fine, and it has synergy with the Tyranid, as we're going to see later on. But the real meat of this ability is in the X spell doubling. That is going to be super fun. And it's going to allow you to get really, really big stuff. And you also get to copy any creatures that come in. So you get a token copy. I always really like token copies of creatures and permanents. I'm not sure why. So this could be something I could definitely see myself building a deck around. Next up, we have Imatech the Stormlord for two colorless and two black. It's a legendary artifact creature, Necron. It's a 3-3, and it has two abilities. Pharon, whenever one or more artifact cards leave your graveyard, create two 2-2 two, two black Necron warrior artifact creature tokens. And Grand Strategist, at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target artifact creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains menace until end of turn. 
I kind of like this one. This one's pretty unique. So judging from this card, it seems clear that the Necron have a sub-theme of artifacts leaving the graveyard. That's pretty cool because it's something that we've never seen before. I think the fact that you can trigger this multiple times per turn and getting two two twos each time you do it can get out of hand pretty quickly. So I quite like this. It works really well with the mythic leader of the deck as well, so that's good to have. And then the second ability is just gravy on top, so giving something plus two plus two in Menace means it's pretty likely that you'll connect with it, and that just seems fine. And here we have one of my favorite ones for this spoiler, which is possibly going to be the new Demon Tribal Commander, because it's just awesome. It's called Bellacor the Dark Master. Three colorless, one blue, one black, one red, legendary creature, Demon Noble, and it's a 6-5 with flying. It has Prince of Chaos. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of demons you control. That's already sweet. And then we have Lord of Torment. Whenever another demon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This is awesome. This is so, so cool. I want to build this so bad. Both of those abilities are great. It means that you can drop this as the last card you draw in a board full of demons, or you can drop it early on and then just start dealing damage depending on what you want. Demons are usually pretty chunky, and there are some that are quite cheap, so you can definitely clock people really fast with this. You can also just use it to control the board and take care of all those small creatures. I also love that it's in blue and red, because I love any deck where I can play Molten Echoes and Echoes of Lijara. That's going to be sweet in this deck. Copying demons and getting extra copies which all deal damage when they come into play. Woof, that's so good. Obviously also amazing with Kindred Discovery. This is just going to be super sweet. And I don't have a Grixis deck yet, so I think I found my new Grixis commander. Pick up your demons now because they are going to get out of control in price pretty soon. Next up we have Marnius Kalgar. It's just two colorless, one white, one blue, one black. It's a legendary creature, a status warrior. A double strike 3-5 and it has Master Tactician. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Chapter Master for six colorless, create two 2-2 two, two white Astartes Warrior creature tokens with Vigilance. So this is really strong. It comes in with card draw included. Every time you make a token, you're going to be drawing a card. With this card, you want things that make incremental tokens. So two things that seem really good are Genesis Chamber and Sacred Mesa. They're each going to trigger this each time and you're just going to draw so many cards off of this. There's a lot of support for tokens these days. This goes well with Benny Brax and it goes well with a bunch of other stuff because you, you're kind of incentivized with this to be able to make your tokens on demand at instant speed if possible. And then you also have the ability on top so if you don't have any other token makers you just pay six and you get two tokens and draw a card. This is a lot of good stuff on a commander and another commander with card draw which we've seen what three of so far so having commanders that draw you cards is really really solid. Death Leaper, Terror Weapon, a two colorless, one red, one green, legendary creature, Tyranid, for a 3-3 with Flash Haste, and creatures you control that entered the battlefield this turn have Double Strike. This is a weird one. I think it's supposed to be played in kind of Cascade decks. It's going to be pretty decent in Cascade decks, such as Maelstrom Wanderer, where everything has haste anyway. It can deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. It's nice that it has flash as well. You can kind of ambush people if you're playing it in a flash deck and just attack them with all these double strikers out of nowhere. Bit of a weird card though. It's going to go in very specific decks and not anywhere else, I don't think. Brutal is an X colorless, three colorless, one green, creature tyranid, three three. It has ravenous, which means it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. If X is five or more, you're also going to draw a card. And it has Brood Telepathy. When Broodlord enters the battlefield, distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of other target creatures you control. This is one that I'm a little bit conflicted about. It's going to have synergy with the Tyranids because they have a lot of X matter stuff and a lot of counters matter stuff. But if you're just hard casting this, this is really expensive. It's 9 mana to get an 8-8 eight eight that draws a card and distributes 5 counters amongst creatures you control. That's fine, but like... There's just so many better things you could be doing with 9 mana in Commander. You could just be winning the game. It's a bit dirtily and slow. It's nice that you can cast it for less if you want to. You could just cast it for 5 mana and put a counter on something. But for it to be really worth it, you need to be sinking a lot of mana into that X. But at that point, you're using all this mana and you're just getting one big chunky dude and spreading out a couple of counters. Just doesn't seem that great to me. Old One Eye is five colorless, one green, legendary creature, Tyranid, six six with trample. Other creatures you control have trample. When it enters the battlefield, you get a five five green Tyranid creature token, and it has fast healing. At the beginning of your pre combat main phase, you may discard two cards if you do return Old One Eye from your graveyard to your hand. This does a lot of stuff, really. For six mana, you're getting 11 power into play. 
that's pretty good as a commander. So if you have it in the command zone, being able to guarantee you're getting 11 power on turn, well, probably earlier than six because you're ramping in green, is pretty nice. Giving everything trample, also pretty nice if you're in a mono green deck. The other ability is better in the 99. Obviously, if you're in a deck that's drawing a lot of cards, you don't mind discarding two cards to get this back and get another 11 power on the board. This seems like it could be good in quite a few decks. It's a lot of power, and it also gives trample to your team, which is something that can never be bad in green. So I'm excited to see how this one works out. And finally, we have the first Tyrannic War. It's two colorless, one green, one blue, one red. It's a saga, a regular saga, no read ahead this time. The first chapter is, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. If its mana cost contains X, it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters on it, equal to the number of lands you control. And then chapters two and three are double the amount of each kind of counters on target creature you control. So this is kind of sweet in a counters deck, in a deck with a lot of X's in it, like Hydras. The first part where it lets you drop the creature and then it comes in with counters on it is pretty, pretty nice. It's gonna work really well with the one we just talked about earlier, and it really seems like they just made these two cards specifically so they should be played together, because hard casting that Tyranid from earlier is not that good, but if you put it in with this on turn five, you're suddenly getting 8-8, eight, eight, you're drawing a card, you're spreading out five counters. That is an absolutely insane chain of play, but you need those two cards specifically. This will still be good with some other things, but if you're doing it with a normal X spell where they have a power of zero regularly, you're getting a 5-5 five, five out of it. That's still probably fine. Not quite as good as it would be otherwise. And then the doubling effect is solid. It's going to let you make your Tyranids even huger. I think this is well worth a five mana. It's not a super exciting card, and it does fit specifically in the Tyranid deck, but it seems quite decent. So there you have it. These are the first batch of spoilers for Warhammer 40k, including the new legendary tribal demon lord, which is absolutely awesome. What do you think of these cards? Is there any that you are looking forward to building a deck around? Please let me know in the comments below. I read every comment and I respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'm currently growing the channel and it really helps me a lot. And until next time, take care.